Hey, it's me. And today, 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 we are doing the second uh, installment of, I guess, technically a new series. I add series left and right. I'm losing track. I'm doing dollar store makeovers once again. I did this somewhat recently and you guys really liked it and wanted to see me do it again and had very specific requests. I am here to accommodate. <laughs> I am at your service. But basically I just went shopping at the dollar store, picked out a bunch of items that I thought I could paint on or customize in some way. But there were several of those options that you guys really wanted to see me paint that I didn't get around to. First, we have the popcorn container, which of course you guys wanted to see me paint the largest and probably most difficult thing. Thank you for that. Oh, let me put it on my head. I did it the first time. And so I feel like I need to do it again. It's still very underwhelming. This was the other thing that I saw a lot of people wanting me to do. We know who this is about. Georgie, it's about him. We're gonna do it today. Let's get into these dollar store makeovers. Starting with the large popcorn container. It's made of shiny plastic and has that very traditional popcorn container design. Quite roomy inside. He's a, he's a big boy, but it's also pretty darn flimsy. I mean, I suppose you don't need like an iron fortress to hold some popcorn. <laughs> Who is, who is that? Who is this? This is my mask. I wear it when I sand things. And right now I'm going to sand things. I just want to scuff up the surface a little bit because in general, paint no likey smooth. Paint likey rough. So we need to get the surface so that the paint will likey. Okay, please stop. As you can see, it's spreading the red design all over the place. We are just trashing this thing. And that's good. Keep it going. Keep that pinky up. I'm going to take a damp paper towel and just wipe up the dust. See, dust, fascinating. Get all that cleared away so I have a nice clean surface to work with. Oh, look at that. Now we've got that kind of vintage look going on. I've just added value to this and perfect. The surface has a nice subtle texture to it. So let's now start with the gesso. Am I annoying? Going in and boom, gesso this boy. That's right, cover it all up and just smell. <sighs> Smell that fresh start. The first coat of gesso did start to bubble away just a little bit. That's okay, don't panic. I'm panicking. Just let it dry, go over it with a second coat and that'll be all fixed. See, told ya. Now, this is a popcorn container, astute observation. But you know what? I don't really think that I need a popcorn container in my life. I mean, who does really? You, you make the popcorn, you eat it out of the bag and it's a fine day. Wait, where was I going with that? Oh, hold that thought. The gessoing is done. Done, and this is looking fresh, except that, ew, what is that? Why did it smear and how did it get there? Whatever. <laughs> it's time to paint this. I've got a nice palette of pastels here and I'm gonna go with the soft yellow for the background of this. Oh. Sorry, I was just mesmerized for a second. Back to what I was saying before, I don't want this to function as a popcorn container. It's just gonna be a regular container. So this popcorn thing, get it out of your head, get it out of there. I can't. Try. After letting that first coat dry, of course we see the reappearance of the red stripes. So I've gotta go over that again to get rid of those. There, clean yellow background. Now, back at it again with the nasty pencil. Someone take Take this thing away from me. I'm sketching out my design, which you may or may not be able to see. How good are your eyes? So it's a cat in a frozen yogurt cup. And I'm gonna paint now. I'm starting out with a very light pink on the frozen yogurt. And then shortly after I began, I decided it's too dark. For some reason, I had this idea in my head to do like extreme pastels, like just tinted white almost. It just had to be this way. So why, you may ask, have I decided to paint a cat in a cup of frozen yogurt? And why is it frozen yogurt? Why not just ice cream? Well, first of all, you ask a lot of questions. Calm down with that. Well, I'm offended. Second, frozen yogurt is healthier fewer calories, come on, you know this. And the reason I chose to paint this particular image 
Well, that's a very good question. Now, this is looking very light and airy, almost too much so. It's like about to float away. So I'm gonna bring in some slightly deeper colors to give it a little bit more dimension. A lot of the time when I paint containers and boxes like this, I use the function of the box or the location that I keep it in as inspiration for the decoration. A lot of rhyming words, but I don't really have a specific plan for this container. I don't know where I'm gonna put it. I don't know what I'm gonna store inside of it. So the design got a little bit random. Oh, my phone is out. What's the convo here? Will do leave the, that's not juicy. Anyway, even though this design kind of has nothing to do with anything, I still really like it. It's cute. So let me proceed to describe it, even though you can already see what it is because I can't help myself. It's gonna be fun. We've got a happy white cat kind of plopped into a cup of what looks to be strawberry and lime flavored ice out. Oh frozen yogurt with of course some little sprinkles on top and um yeah that's about the end of it i'm adding my little signature here and getting out some gloss varnish oh got a boogie pour that out and apply it over my paint job now are we done yeah no that's just one side of it flipping it over i went for a nice mint green background on this side and once that was dry here comes my design poof it's another cat stuck in frozen yogurt we have to stay on theme here okay i'm, I'm not some kind of lunatic <laughs> Never mind. I've drawn this cat in a different pose and I'm using a different color scheme here because she's got her own identity. And not every cat in a cup of frozen yogurt looks the same. You may notice I did kind of step away from the super light pastels. I kind of already got tired of those. I mean, these are still pastel colors. They're more lively pastels, not those really wispy pastels. So for this cat, I went for a light brown color and I made her centered inside the frozen yogurt. The last one was like, like basking in there and this one looks more like it's kind of stuck and the flavor of this one is lemon and cherry what wait a second i just realized my plan for these was to do one side strawberry lemonade and the other side cherry limeade apparently i mixed them up and did strawberry lime and cherry lemon you dummy well whatever that's fine i'm bringing in some of the last details now you can see that this cat is a little more on the serious side we need someone to keep it real. And I'm finishing up that paint job, applying the varnish. Fantastic. I'm not gonna paint anything intricate on the sides of the box because I already did the front and the back and I only got so much time here. So solid colors on the sides it is. And from the dollar store popcorn container to a custom cats in frozen yogurt container. I feel like this turned out just so cute. I mean, look at them, gosh, I really like like how it's double-sided so when I get tired of looking at one side I can just turn it around and display the other side although that's what I said about that paper holder and it's literally been facing the same way for like two years I think I actually like this side better we still know in our hearts she's back there and now we are breaking out the Georgie box well it's not Georgie yet but just give me a second so this is clearly a very simple and cheaply made little box but we can definitely still work with it. The only real problem I have with it is the crown. Georgie has a rounded crown, not this sharp Statue of Liberty thing going on. So I'm gonna have to change that. I'm rolling out the wax paper, getting my water out, and breaking out my air dry clay. Oh, you know it. I've been using clay fairly often here. I'm starting to feel like a, like a, like a clay person. All right, got my hunk. Let's wet it up real good and gooey. I have had an idea in my head about how to make this work. I was kind of skeptical, but I decided to just give it a try. I'm thinking that I can build a three-dimensional crown over top of the existing one and just kind of like mold it onto the box. So I'm creating my nice rounded leaves. Look at that scoring with my fingernail. Kind of gross. And I'm continuing to build up a nice full crown for my Georgie. Then I noticed that it wasn't sticking all that securely to the 
wood. So I decided to wrap the clay all the way around the back. So uh, things are getting real thick, real fast here. It's just a little bit bulkier than I would have liked, but I'm just gonna spend a butt ton of time smoothing everything out. I'm kind of cutting in the bottom edge to clean it up and just making sure all the leaves are smoothed out and well formed and nice and defined. And this is looking pretty good. But then I turn it around to the back. <gasps> Hello, failure. We got a lumpy train wreck back there. At this point, the clay was starting to dry out a little bit. I mean, I kept re-wetting it, but it seems like the longer the clay sits out, the harder it is to get it smooth. Even if you try to keep it moist. Well, you don't like that? Moist, moist, moist. <laughs> Um, even though I keep applying water, it's not fresh, you know? It doesn't want to mold as easily. Is that just me, or is that the truth of air dry clay? I really don't know. So this is how it ended up. The front looks pretty decent. The back is a whole other story. It's lumpy. It's not particularly good at all. But the clay no longer wants to work with me. We are no longer friends. It's being mean. I have no choice but to just walk away from the situation. And a few days later, it's completely dry now. Did it magically become? unhideous no it's still ugly that's all right I'm happy with the front so let's just get painting I was still kind of stuck on pastels at this point so I decided to paint a pastel version of Georgie maybe it's like baby Georgie you know before his colors darkened what? That's just, I'm making things up. But since I've created Georgie in several different forms at this point, I thought it might be fun to do something slightly different. Here I go painting the backside, desperately hoping that the paint hides the situation. It didn't. And just like that, onto adding his little features. So you guys are the ones that requested that I make the Georgie box happen. But honestly, I was kind of glad about this one because this was pretty easy. At this point, I know Georgie, okay? I'm very familiar. Familiar. So I can just quickly whip up a Georgie in no time, aside from the whole crown reconstruction thing that was a little tricky but I really didn't even have to do that that was just me being extra so I was able to answer one of your requests with very little effort which is not typical because most of the time you guys like to ask me to do the most time consuming things this is almost done at this point but I absolutely hate the way I outlined the top ew no oh my gosh that is so ugly so I went over that and also fixed up a few more areas around for the rest of the box, I really didn't feel the need to put that much effort into it, especially since we already kind of have an eyesore back there. I'm definitely not going to take the time to do anything overly decorative. Also, it minorly bothers me that the back pineapple crown still has those points. They're like mismatched and that just messes with me. Not perfect and I don't like it. If I could go back in time, I might have tried to like saw off the top of that, but at this point, I didn't want to attempt something like that and risk ruining what I've already done here. Me and Saws, mm, not necessarily a good combination. Whoops. So yeah, let's just stick to painting it orange. All right, the painting is done. Of course, I'm throwing on a nice little clear coat. And here's the transformation from plain wooden box to custom Georgie themed box. Aw, this is really cute. I mean, it's Georgie. He's like a cheat code to cuteness. I think the clay leaves look really nice from the front and I'm happy with the soft pastel version of him. It's just so adorable. No clue exactly what I'm gonna use this box for either, but I'm sure I'll figure it out. At this point, I've painted so many boxes and different vessels. I, I feel like I have more places to store things than I have things to store. I guess I need to go shopping for more things. That's the logical solution to this problem. Well, once again, dollar store makeovers was really fun. I hope those of you who wanted to see me paint these two items are now satisfied. I think they came out really nice and I really enjoyed painting them. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye!